Hi, I'm Alex Howard, and I'm here with Tanya Page, Director of Nutrition at the Optimum Health Clinic. Hi, Tanya. Hi. And in this video, I wanted to give a bit of an overview of how it works in the nutrition department at the clinic. So specifically, the process that you go through if you sign up as a new patient, what you can expect, how it works, and really how that journey to patient will unfold. So when someone first signs up, that might happen mm. in a 15 minute chat or talking to our new patient coordinator, something like that. So what books an appointment, what happens next? What is that process? Okay, so um, as soon as that happens, um, the admin team sort of uh, gets into action, sends off um, a couple of questionnaires to the patient, also a confirmation letter. Uh, if the patient's coming to the clinic, um, we'll tell them how to get here. Um, if it's on the phone or if it's by Skype, there'll be details of that. So they'll um, basically just clear instructions of that process yeah, of what happens. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's what goes to the patient. We, we ask that, that the questionnaires come back to the clinic as, as, um, along with any other sort of relevant tests that the patient might have had more recently. Because um, obviously it's worth saying very often uh, people that come to the clinic have done a lot of other mm. nutrition based work before. It's fine if they haven't, but often they yeah. have. And we don't want to kind of reinvent the wheel. So we want to exactly. take everything that's been done there and very often part of what we're doing is analysing and using any recent information but yeah. it's also useful to understand why things in the past might not have worked because that's one of our great I guess expertises is to take that bird's eye view and to see how yeah. everything may, may be fitting together. Absolutely and probably to give a little bit more clarity to that actually a lot of people ask you know they might have been ill for 20 years they might have done 50,000 tests in that time now um, there'll be certain tests that might be unique, that they've only done once or twice, even if they were 10 years ago, we'd still like to see those. Um, but in terms of tests that they might have had with the GP or um, more sort of standard tests like adrenal tests or thyroid tests, we'd want the most recent ones because they're the most relevant. So the, the questionnaires come back to the clinic, we'd like that about a week before. That enables us to complete all the analyses that we have to do. So, um, so the questionnaire has come back to our nutrition support um, person, Kirsty. Um, so she will take those questionnaires, any test results, um, she will analyse some of those, put them into a, a format that, that, the, that the practitioner will be able to, to um, analyse more easily. Um, so once the questionnaires um, and the information comes to that, the practitioner, it's very much a matter of preparation. Um, some patients have quite a complicated history. We want to make sure as much as possible we've kind of got our heads around that before we speak to the patient. So with some, I mean, I have been known to prepare for three hours for a consultation before. Um, I would say it's somewhere between one and two hours beforehand that the practitioner would be um, reviewing the case, you know, really looking at the questionnaire very carefully, looking at any test results, um, getting a picture in their mind of where they might be going with this patient, yeah. obviously not making too many conclusions before speaking yeah. to the patient, but certainly getting a, a good background knowledge um, I, of the patient yeah. first. I, I think there's, there's nothing more frustrating as a patient to go and see a practitioner where you sent in a huge amount of information which is relevant yeah. and they just start flicking it through in the consultation without having done the analysis because yeah. you can't absorb that quantity of information and effectively make decisions based upon it without no. that preparation. And we want to make sure the time with the patient is really spent asking the specific questions based on that, that kind of vast amount of information, just from our clinical questionnaire and, and those yeah, kind of things. Yeah. Um, so it's really about getting the most out of that time with, with the patient when we're talking to them. Yeah, um, and that's really why we had to take on someone for nutrition support, because it was actually too much for a practitioner to do with each patient. There's so much information there. Yeah. So nutrition support really helped us to partly analyse um, you know the patient's case, the the, the simple stuff, the yeah. straightforward and to stuff. Yeah, put it into a spreadsheet where yeah. it can easily be effectively be used. Absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, just to kind of clarify at this mm. point, a recap. So before someone actually has their appointment, be it face to face or telephone or Skype, yeah, they filled in a, a number of um, questions on two questionnaires. That information has come to nutrition support. They've done a basic analysis and data entry with that. That's then come through to the practitioner. Yeah. They've spent one to two hours on average going through that. And then we actually speak to the patient. Yeah. So what then happens in that consultation, in that time actually on the phone with the patient? Okay. So that time on the phone is approximately an hour. Um, occasionally runs slightly over, but that, that's what we're aiming for. 
Um, the idea in that hour is to really get to grips with the case in a lot of detail, so really take a very comprehensive history of that person. Um, that's medical history, that's life history, that's everything from the moment they were born, in fact, a little bit before that, if we know that information, yeah. it's very useful to, to know from, from that point onwards. Um, because when we see the history of a patient, we can see um, what any um, issues were perhaps earlier in life that have uh, accumulated to, to create the current situation. Um, we want to know what the predisposing factors are, what any triggers to the illness um, might have been, um, and obviously what's going on now, what the key um, issues are that we need to address. Um, so it's very much a matter of um, lots of information gathering, making sure we're not reading between the lines as well. It's easy to look at a questionnaire sometimes and assume something. The patient might mean something a little bit different. So we do obviously use that time to talk to the patient to clarify certain issues yeah. and certain things that they might have told us so that we've got it absolutely clear what's going on. So we have a really good big picture of the situation. Um, we then obviously uh, get more information from the patient if we need it. We then talk um, about or with the patient about what we think is going on, what we think has caused the, the situation they're currently in, what, what has led up to it, what, what are the issues we really need to look at. And we try as much as possible to give as much information as possible. And I think this is the thing that's most useful to a patient, I think, to actually understand as much as we can at this point why they're in the situation that yeah. they're in. Yeah. Um, we at that point would, would um, again, as much as possible, give a sort of roadmap of where we're going to go first. We can't draw the entire roadmap from now to recovery. We just can't do that. Yeah. But we certainly will know roughly what that might yeah. look at. And then we'll know in the short term what, what the, the next yeah. steps are going to be, and maybe a, a few beyond. Yeah. Um, and we will give the patient as much information as they as they feel they need. Some people need a lot of information, some people just need to be told what to do, yeah. quite frankly. Um, you know, we will obviously um, see what suits the patient yeah. at that point. Yeah, and so at the end of that initial conversation, mm. what happens next? Because obviously then a process of having gone through the, the pre-consultation, the consultation of kind of what the patient needs to do and how that's communicated. Yeah, so in the consultation, we would have discussed with the patient what the next steps are in terms of whether that's um, dietary changes, supplemental advice, um, as in supplemental nutrients, whether any other tests are appropriate um, to that patient. So after the consultation, we will send um, the appropriate information. So whether that be how to get tests done, um, what supplements they, they need to take, um, where to get them, how to get them. Mm -hmm. Um, and what dietary information they need, and that will be very much tailored to that specific patient. Um, so those instructions are quite clear. They come um, as soon as possible after the consultation, um, certainly within a, a couple of days. Um, and so, in theory, the patient has everything they need to move forward yeah. so that they can um, go for the next few weeks. It may be four weeks, it may be eight weeks. It really depends what needs to be done in that time. Mm -hmm. Um, we'd like to get as much information as we can for the first follow-up mm -hmm. because that's when we can really see how the patient's got on um, in terms of the dietary supplemental side yeah. um, by the time we get there and we will have gathered information on maybe home tests yeah. um, that sort of thing yeah and, and I think it's before we kind of come into mm. that it's worth just kind of recapping that I know a question often comes up is people say you know the current price of 215 pounds so well, that's quite a lot of money i'm only on the phone for an hour mm. but actually there's a lot of work that goes in you know there's there's the work of nutrition support mm. which could say i'm guessing probably around half an hour to an hour per patient of the mm. stuff that comes Depends, in yeah. and then there's one to two hours prior mm -hmm. there's an hour of the consultation yeah. and then there's a the write-up time which can be i guess anything from half an hour again to an extreme case of a couple of hours yeah because it can also be looking at any interactions with drugs that someone may be taking and that kind of thing as well absolutely i think that the, the more complex the case the more drugs someone may be on the more complicated it is for the practitioner yeah. and really you kind of have to be sure where you're going and what you're doing you know you uh, you know the type of practitioner we have are very professional very accurate um, and so we don't want to make any mistakes we don't want to yeah. recommend something that goes against you know 
or would would interfere with drug um, the drugs that they're using. So, you know, it's really important to to get on the right path from the word go. So we really once we've got that big picture, we really have to sit down after the consultation and think right, okay, what is the most appropriate step forward? Yeah. You know, which tests are pertinent for this patient? What can they actually manage to do? Mm. Um, you know, what supplements are appropriate for this person? What can they manage? You know, physically, um, psychologically, uh, financially. financially. Yeah. Um, so it's like it's a whole big, you know, uh, can of worms actually um, to to in that first consultation to really bring it together in a form that's actually understandable um, and and clear uh, to the patient. So yeah, yeah it's 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 a big lot of work in that that first consultation. Yeah. yeah. And so then between that first consultation and follow-up consultation, the patient may well um, be making various dietary changes, yeah. taking various supplements. They may also be completing some home tests or, or um, other tests. So what then happens in a follow-up consultation? Well, in a follow-up consultation, um, we, we talk again, it will be on the phone. Um, all follow-up consultations are done on the phone. Or by, by Skype. Or by Skype, yes. Yeah. Um, so then, Hopefully we'll have, it may not be the case, but hopefully we'll have some home test results, we'll have some, um, maybe some results from labs. We'll, um, we'll really get a feel for how um, the patient has got on since the first consultation in terms of the dietary changes they may have made, how they've got on with those. Um, supplemental um, nutrients, again, how they've got on with those, how they're now feeling as a result of all of that. We will look at all the information we've got um, based on how they've how they've been getting on any test results. We will then um, again review and reassess the case. It's very much a matter of um, constantly prioritising reviewing um, in order to move forward. So um, it's it's again it's like moving on to the next part of the roadmap. We've yeah. we've got more information now, so we can be more focused in in where we're going next. So so literally, it's a matter of discussing with the patient. Um, it is, it's the same principle every time, essentially, you know, what's going on, how, how are they feeling, how are they getting on, um, what do we need to do next, and obviously explaining how, yeah. how the yeah. patient goes about doing that. And it's also just worth saying um, on the test results side that, again, they will, the practitioner will get those prior to the appointment, they will yes. go through that and analyse that yeah. in advance. Absolutely. And, then, and we have a policy of not sending test results to patients in advance of consultations mm. because we used to have a number of times patients would look at their test results and freak out seeing them and not have them explained in a clear way, yeah. which is really yeah. important to kind of make the, make the yeah. right conclusions from, from that information. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and so the test results would be then gone through in the consultation, then we would mm. send a copy to the patient after the consultation so they've got that for their record or if they want to have Absolutely. it. Um, and then at the end of that follow-up consultation there would again be recommendations for any changes to supplements you yeah. know we're, we're not fans of people staying on supplements longer than they need to mm. you know there are people that come in that were put on um, a supplement program five years ago by a practitioner and they're still taking it yeah, which yeah. is kind of worrying yeah, so definitely. you know it's important that it's kind of you know that we people are on what they uh, what they need to be on but they're not on more than that um, Absolutely. I think, you know, the, the, there has been a bit of a trend to, you know, I've, I've seen patients coming in on sort of 25, 30 supplements. And although you can justify why you might be taking all of those, it's a real big load on the body. Yeah. Um, and, you know, really it's about being very specific and very focused on what that person specifically needs. That's why we're quite focused on getting as much information as possible. Yeah because then we can be um, very specific about the nutrients yeah. that we suggest. And also, I'm a, I'm a great believer in um, testing as much as possible. If we're giving a specific nutrient, say coenzyme Q10, for instance, it's an expensive supplement. So I'd rather test, do a blood test to find out how they're doing, um, which is actually cheaper than buying the supplement, yeah. um, so that we can actually see how long they need to be on that and, and you know come off it as soon as we yeah. possibly can, because finances obviously are you know, key to it to many people. Yeah, yeah. And so then beyond a first follow-up consultation, mm. obviously then the process unfolds for that patient depending upon their situation, how things are improving, what they need, their finances, that kind of thing. Yeah. But generally, what's a rough picture of what that process would look like? It's very different for each person. Um, the, uh, it, it can be a long process, it can be a short process. Um, the best person to talk to about this is your practitioner because they'll obviously know your case very well and will be able to advise you know where you might be going 
Um, it's unusual for there to be only the first consultation and the first follow-up, mm -hmm. um, unless you only needed you know, just simple sort of dietary um, guidance and a few sort of key supplements. Um, the chances are the patient's case is more complex than that, yeah. in which case we need to see people through that process um, so that, you know, through rebalancing all the various body systems, getting them back to, to normal health. Yeah. Um, we want to try, we, you know, we want to support people through that. Now it's how we do that has to be tailored to the patient. So if there's all the money under the sun, which is extremely unusual, then we can do absolutely everything we need to do um, without any uh, concerns. Um, but the vast majority of the, of the people we deal with have financial constraints. So we're very used to working within that. So that might be choosing supplements accordingly yeah. um, to, to, to budget. Um, and also, you know, spacing out consultations accordingly yeah. for financial reasons, but also for the person. Some yeah. people are absolutely fine just going off and doing their thing and getting on with it with no problems. Yeah. Other people really need more support than that. And we have to do it in more baby steps as we go along. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's very much geared to what the patient needs and what is appropriate in terms of the programme. Yeah. yeah, I think that's really important. Effectively, the practitioner will work with the patient where yeah. they are yeah. to get them where, where they ultimately want to get. And yeah. it's maybe you know, also worth saying at this point, and we've said it in other videos, but just to kind of um, make the point here, that if a case is particularly complicated and it's not responding in the way that the practitioner would hope it to, then that's also where the support structure of the entire department comes in. Mm. That there are a team of six, seven practitioners all specialising in the way that, that we work. Yeah. So very often case studies will come up in team meetings and be discussed as well. And so a lot of what the patient doesn't see behind the scenes mm. Mm. is that kind of constant research and development and communication to make sure that we're giving the very best kind of support and guidance to people that we're working with. Absolutely. Um, and, and I guess, you know, in, in answer to the kind of final question, I think we've already answered it, which is around, well, you know, how long does it take? You know, what, you know, do, you know does it work? And I guess really the answer to that question is that's where 15 minute chats are important yeah. at the start. And that's where when you're in treatment, practitioners will be regularly road mapping and bringing back to, okay, so we finished this protocol, these things have changed, this is where we're looking to go next, this is how long it should take and what we expect. Mm. And so, you know, it's not a kind of, it's not a perfect um, prediction, no. but we're reasonably good now at having a sense of how things will unfold. Yeah, indeed. Um, so I guess really the kind of final point is if someone would like to find out more um, about the clinic, then an information pack and then a free 15 minute chat is the best way to do so. Um, and for someone that's in treatment, I hope it's just a useful kind of behind the scenes, as it were, yeah. of, you know, how we do what we do. Um, so thank you, Tanya. And thank you for watching. And we look forward to talking with you hopefully in another video very soon.